with all that said, in your experience, I'm sure you you network and interact with a lot of built environment professionals. Do you right. think, I mean, not just students or newly uh, recently graduated students, but generally built environment professionals, do you think they appreciate their role when it comes to promoting social justice, their role in using what they do on a daily basis in their work in promoting social justice? And please explain, explain your, your answer. Right. Thanks, Tommy. I think number one, it, a, a big responsibility falls on mentors, um, teachers um, in, in the academic space like, like myself and like uh, Prof. Mark to, uh, to, to indoctrinate that and to push that as a, a priority that people need to see that particular role. Um, at the same time, I feel that then once the individual steps out of the academic space and goes into the workspace, then different agendas are then being you know drawn based on where you are based on the type of mentorship that you're going to be getting um, definitely it is important but you will pick up that uh, students and uh, you know individuals that are coming into the workplace then tend to follow the trend that is within that particular built environment workspace um, and it, it follows the the, the ethos of that particular company, what they want to achieve. You know, some are profit driven. You know, some are driven to ensure that it just works enough to keep us within the pay books and you know moving forward from there for as long as we're getting paid. You know, it, you know, and that's where I think the problem comes in. And it's so important for us to continually rem, uh, remind our um, you know our group of professionals that you do have a responsibility to ensure that you build sustainable systems um, and and it helps in the development of the country. Um, do you believe your peers in the built environment industry actually appreciate their role uh, in promoting social justice? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, it's a good question. I'm not 100% sure whether I can, can answer it, but I, I think they do understand, they do realize their role. Um, but I also see especially among uh, the, the older engineers yeah, uh, that they can be very traditional sometimes and, and, and so you see a little bit of a conflict with our younger generation of graduates who come into the market with that, that, that new toolkit that they have learned and with their new ambitions and their their activism and, and things like that and it's and I and I and I see many consultancies and contractors actually embracing that but sometimes it's also a bit of a fight it's a fight between seniority and juniority it's a fight between traditional methods and new methods it's also a fight between standards that are written down in documents that are far too old to be still as a standard but haven't been updated. So sometimes, even if you want, if you have to comply with the standards, you have to do it in a certain way. And it is not always conducive to doing it in a more fair or a more equitable way. And, and, and so that those are things we are sometimes uh, facing in, in our work. Uh, just to give you an example, in many of the standards in transportation, there's not even a mention of townships, yeah? whereas there's a, a large part of the country is townships, and a large part of the townships also need to be designed and engineered, and so we need the standards to also apply there. And so I don't want to be guessing yeah, where it fits. So, so I think there, there's a responsibility in the industry to update on, on many of the document, documents and I know for a fact that Sunwell, for example, my sponsor is doing that and, and DOT is working on that. But that uh, we actually must do that much quicker and we need to in, include the, the young guys like yourselves in that process. But again, I see a lot of my students, uh, not just one, is really like many students are starting small NGOs they're very active, they're really trying to reach out to the communities and make a difference. So I, I, I really am convinced that despite all the drama that we are having these past few months, the, the future of South Africa is very, very bright.